If you ever go around asking for advice on how to become a better programmer, a pretty common tip to hear is that you should document your code. And that's good advice. And that can mean several different things. This, by the way, is the same 3D matrix math multiplication... Matrix math multiplication, matrix math multiplication. It's the same tutorial video that I've been using as a, as a guinea pig for the last couple uh, weeks. I'm not actually going to be talking about any of this stuff in it. Standard disclaimer applies. If you see a bunch of scary looking math, don't worry. So an easy thing to do, and I have admittedly not really been doing this in these tutorial videos, and I probably should because I want people to understand my code, is to add a double slash comment and let's say something like create the transform matrices, and maybe on the next section of code, Something like that. That's fairly helpful. You know what this is. You know what this is doing at a glance now, even if you don't immediately understand which functions are doing what with what variables or anything. GameMaker has a couple other tools for documentation, though, and so do most other code IDEs. If you've ever written code in any other programming language, you may have come across something similar. So if you start to type out the name of a built-in function, let's say instance create. And if you were to wait a, a second or so, or alternatively hit control, control space to bring it up immediately, this little dropdown will appear. And you can see some suggestions for functions that you might want. Instance create depth, instance create layer. You can see the arguments that they take. An x coordinate, a y coordinate, a depth value, which is also technically a coordinate, although you don't usually think of it as such in 2D Game Maker. And an object type. Let me go and just select instance create depth. And then when you do that, at the bottom you can see uh, the same thing, instance create depth, x, y, depth, and the object type. And that's pretty useful in case you ever forget the arguments that go into these functions, and you don't want to have to look up the function in the documentation every time to see what arguments it takes, because that would significantly slow down your, uh, your programming speed. However, if you try to do that with a script that you created on your own, uh, one of these guys over here, let's say... Um, let's go into, and this, this code really should be in the game object create event, but I'm not here to, to worry about the actual code in this project right now. Um, I want game world. So here's one of those, uh, those, those scripts that I created, one of the functions that I created, whatever you want to call them. Hopefully soon. The distinction between a script and a function will uh, will decrease drastically, but that's neither here nor there. I'm giving it arguments, but when I when I click on the function name, no help appears at the bottom. And if I were to type out, oops, if I were to type out load with an underscore, you can see the two scripts that I created, uh, load model and load obj, as well as a couple other load functions that I will not be worrying about right now. Uh, they have no, they have no argument help. They just have the function name with empty parentheses. Oops, I did not want that. I am decidedly not making a tutorial on the Steam APR today. So if you were to open up the load, the load OBJ script, you you see that it can indeed, that it does indeed, uh, require two arguments that you were to pass to it. These are two file names in this case. Anyway, you can see that this script does indeed take two arguments, but those two arguments are not are not labeled in any way. GameMaker has no idea of telling you what they are. They're assigned. They're currently being assigned to variables at the beginning of the script, but this means nothing to GameMaker. It can't read your code and understand in English what's happening. So you can do something about that. In old versions of GameMaker, in GameMaker, and by that I mean GameMaker Studio One, because this was not a thing in version eight or previous. Uh, you could write three slashes, and then the. Uh, the function signature, as a computer scientist would call it. I don't really know what else to call it. And you could say, you could just write out how you would use it, load obj with the uh, the argument names. Um, in, in Game Maker Studio 1, that would have done the same as, um, as the built-in functions, and you would be able to see the argument help at the bottom. Uh, Game Maker Studio 2 has actually expanded this. This no longer works. And it has been replaced by a system that is somewhat more flexible. So instead, I will type out three slashes instead of two for the usual comment. And say, at param, 
file name. And then on the line below, another three slashes at param mtl name. And now when I come back over here and when I put my cursor, when I put the, uh, the, the text insertion point and load obj, you can see that the argument help has indeed appeared at the bottom of the code window. If I were to, if I were to type out load obj and hit control space and bring up this little window here, you can see that it does indeed t now show the two arguments. So this, this is GameMaker's current documentation format. It's called JSDoc. If you look in the manual, it's called JSDoc. There's a, there's a page on it. Nobody I know calls it that. They just call it like documentation comments. I assume if you were to get a job as a web dev somewhere, the people around you would be thr throwing around words like that. And it might be good to know what, what they're talking about, but this is GameMaker Studio 2's documentation format. That's not all. So after you type the name of the function arguments, you can give them a short description. Uh, let's say... You can give them a plain text description like that. These are simply comments after all. They're, they're a special kind of comment. They're a kind of comment that GameMaker can read and interpret. But you can put plain text English in here if you want. This is not code. Um, if you come back over here, Nothing has changed. The only thing that is uh, the only thing that is that is displayed in the uh, in the argument help is the first word, the first letter, letter, the first word separated by spaces after the at param. So you can use this however you want. You can use this to be helpful for people who are reading your code in the future or yourself reading the code in the future. If you want to include a little bit more information in this comment, you can type a, you can add a type in between curly braces, between the at param and the argument name, and that will, that will appear down here in the code help. Um, oops, load. I feel like it's easier to read when I do this than, uh, than when I just let it appear at the bottom of the code window. You can now see the types of the uh, of the arguments that you might want to pass. Uh, I don't generally do that. I think it's a little messy when I have a when I have a script with a lot of arguments, and I choose to include a uh, a type, and then it makes the argument list really long and kind of hard to read, which kind of defeats the point. You can do this if you want. For the purposes of this video, I'll I'll do it. Worth mentioning, if you type the the argument type here in front of the argument name, and you do not see the type appearing at the bottom of the code window here, or in the, uh, the auto-completion dropdown, um, you will need to go to Preferences, Languages, GML, and you will need to turn it on to display argument types in status bar. It looks like you can also display argument descriptions in status bar, and I'm curious about how cluttered that would look. Let me, let me click Apply. Oh no, that is that is not helpful whatsoever. Okay, I am turning that off. I would not recommend turning that on. I would recommend just leaving the descriptions here for if you uh if you want to open the file, open the code file and have a longer English description of what they do. Uh the point of the point of the little code help down here is so that you can you can see what you need, what arguments you need at a glance. Some IDEs, Visual Studio or whatever would might have like a floating box appear above the uh, above a function or class name with uh, containing more space to show the information like that but game maker game maker studio ide does not so there are actually and this isn't super important but it bears mentioning anyway there are a couple different words you can use um in place of param you can say arg you can say at arg and this will still work um, you can also say argument. I'm just going to copy and paste there. You can say at argument. And it'll still work. I don't believe there are any others. I, I think if I were to just say something like at a or anything else, it would not show at all. Yeah, it needs to be at param arg or argument. I usually use the word param because that's what I'm used to. 
if you want to save typing, you might want to say at arg instead to characters viewer. I am not a fan of typing out the same thing over and over again, so I would not usually use at argument, the full word on its own. Um, that's just something that you might want to be aware of if you read someone else's code and they have a different, uh, if they have a different keyword at the top in the, in the documentation comments. Another thing you can do is at description and you can you write a short summary of what, of what your scripts do. Uh, you can say load an OBJ model from a file, something like that. That, as far as I know, will not appear here or anywhere. What? This is something I should have tested before I sat down and hit the recording button. But what happens if I say display des descriptions in the status bar? Let me move this off to the side a little bit. That's just the same as before. That was the, the argument help. I don't want that. It would be nice if, um, if instead of using argument descriptions, it showed the, uh, the script description, the function description, but it's not how it works, apparently. I turned that off, didn't I? Good. That's something you can do. The, uh, the documentation, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my cheat sheet back over to the main screen right now. The documentation claims that there is another tag you can add uh, called not at param, called at function. And you can give your script a different name. Let's say load obj from file or something of that nature. And the documentation claims that you can type something like this and give your give your script a different name. And at after that point, instead of the uh, instead of the regular script name appearing here, it would instead it would instead recognize the the alternate name, the at function name. I have never been able to get to this to work. Um, I've tried messing with options in game maker settings. I've tried restarting the IDE. Um, I've never been able to get it to work. I don't know if there's, if the manual is just, that was written and it was never actually implemented in game maker. I don't know if it's broken. I don't know if you, if you have to enable it in some other way in game maker to make that work. When they do the game maker language update in the future, it's completely possible that um, that this that this documentation tag could become more useful, that it might actually do something. As of right now, it's the beginning of March. The game maker hey. update still isn't out, so I'm not going to concern myself with that because every time I do that, I grow sad that it isn't out yet. And that's neither here nor there. Anyway, there's nothing really stopping you from adding your own tags if you want to have a return value. There's nothing stopping you from doing something like this. This will not do anything in Game Maker. You as the programmer may have use for it if you want to look at the top of a script and see what it returns uh, real quick without having to scroll to the bottom. Alternatively, if you're if you're using something like Doxygen or something to doc to to generate automatic documentation for a uh, for Game Maker code, uh, you may find this sort of thing useful. I don't actually know if, and I'm going to delete that at function line because it doesn't do anything as far as I know. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if anybody has written a GML documentation parser for Doxygen or anything. If they, if they, if there is such a thing, that would be very cool. I'd certainly find use for it. Lastly, there is one more thing you can do with documentation comments, and it has to do with the, uh, with the events and objects. And you can see one of them right here. If you type a description, and I like how there's, I, I apparently wrote a description here that doesn't actually... That's not actually true. There's nothing in this draw event. Um, I could get rid of this draw event and the, and the game would work exactly the same way as it has been. I'm going to get rid of that for now because it's a little confusing. If you go to the top of, a, uh, of a, an object event, type at description. In these situations, at description actually does do something. If you start typing things, uh, what 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 does this do? Create the vertex format, I guess. Enable lighting and uh, spawn a going merry. 
You can type a short description and you can see it will appear in next to the event name in the events list in Game Maker Studio 2. This really should be short. You can see it's it's like half of it is flowing out of the uh, out of the box here. There's not a ton of space. You should keep these short if you want them to be useful. I'm going to go with something like that instead. Uh, while I'm here, I suppose I can... Can I shorten this to like at desk or something? Um... I can. Okay, so if you don't want to type out the word description constantly, you can type at desk and it'll do the same thing. Uh, I will do that because I like less typing. Less typing makes my life easier. If I wanted to, I could do the exact same thing for every, uh, every, every single object and script in the game. I'm not going to. Let's be a little more specific there. You hopefully understand the point. Um, I could go into scripts, I could go into load model, which is a different model loader. It loads a game maker model instead of an OBJ. Um, I could do basically the same thing as I did with, um, with load OBJ. Uh, you could write a type if you want. I'm, I'm not going to write the type. I suppose for good measure. Even though it doesn't do anything to game maker. Um, I'll type a return value as well. Okay, that should be good enough. And uh, if I were to come down to the bottom again and type load model, you can see that the same thing happens as with load obj. Uh, the same rules apply. Um, it'll show the, the argument name. If I were to control space to bring up this completion window, uh, same thing, shows the file name. You can do this with longer scripts as well, scripts that take more arguments. This is a script that takes a bunch of 3D model vertex data and just puts it into a vertex buffer so that you don't have to type out these four lines of code every single time. If you wanted to, here you go. Here's the uh, here's the documentation comments for this uh, for the script. And as usual, you know what, I'll just demonstrate it in here. This is recursive and you shouldn't do it, but I'm going to delete it when I'm done anyway. You can see, uh, you can see the full list of parameters appearing at the bottom of the window. And in the, uh, and in code completion help. So, that's documentation comments. Again, I haven't really touched anything to do with, um, with actually writing like traditional, oops, double slash, it's a double slash comments along the, along the lines of these. I don't think that really merits a tutorial on its own. I could just say write comments, but hopefully now if you didn't know about documentation comments before, or if you didn't know how cool they could be, uh, then you do now. So that's it. I hope this improves your, uh, I hope this improves your programming workflow a little bit. If you ever want to bring up the cheat sheet, just open up the uh, open up the help manual in Game Maker. Where is manual? There. Uh, you can type JS doc. That's. You can type JS doc, and the uh, the page will come up. Uh, you could probably also type documentation or something. Nope, it doesn't come up for documentation. Oh well. Type JS doc if you want um. If you want to see the cheat sheet. That's it. That's all I have. Uh, if you if you want this code with these example documentation comments and some of the uh, in some of the code files, um, link in description. Other than that, my name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed that. I don't have a Patreon, but I do have a donation link in the description of the video that I guess I might as well shill at least once in a while when I remember. If you're feeling generous, I will see you all later.